Hey friends, Charity here from Acadiana Grows. It is golden hour in the garden and I really want to show you guys around. It rained two days ago and everything is coming to life. It's gorgeous and it's beautiful and I want to show you what we've got growing in the Head Kicks demonstration garden. Let's check it out. In this bed right behind me, I had one Indian blanket flower just one of these lovely beauties in the corner it spilled out the corner of that bed and it was glorious and this year you can see i've got a beautiful little field of flowers i actually did not do any planting anything they just reseeded came back they are great 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 in your garden they want to be here they're native they're so good if you struggle to grow flowers and you're like every flower dies nothing grows well for me Coreopsis, Indian blanket, um, even Mexican torch sunflowers. They will grow anywhere, everywhere. They're great. And they're so stinking pretty blowing in the wind. I've also got a sunflower here on the corner. We've got our calendula that I've been harvesting. I've harvested a lot of this to make some salves and things with. And you can see we've got, I've been deadheading these and we have new blooms that are coming on on those. We've got a black-eyed Susan in there. I planted some cherry tomatoes here that are gonna be growing up this trellis. I've also got a broccoli plant. I just realized it needs to come out. And I planted some squash in here. I've got some sunflowers coming up and I'll be putting in some more of everybody's favorite sorrel. Everybody loves sorrel in my garden and I plant so much of this stuff. I really need to come in and harvest all of the kale and make kale chips because the caterpillars are going to town. You could do something like BT or diatomaceous earth to really help with those things, but it washes off in the rain for one, and two, kids come eat freight, like straight out of this garden fresh all the time, and I don't want them to have to worry about washing things, so I just know caterpillars are coming, and I just let it happen. I've got more sunflowers popping up that I'm probably gonna be transplanting this is going to seed. I'm doing this to save seeds from it. And I've got, ooh, these are almost ready. I've got more calendula growing on the corner. This is a new bed in the garden. I just put this bed together a couple days ago. A friend donated this bed to our garden. I've got some eggplants, cherry tomatoes, um, tomatillos, and new to this garden is gonna be watermelon. I've never grown watermelon in the Hectic garden, but we're gonna try it out the sunflower bed is doing well it's growing well these beauties will all be starting to bloom soon i'm really waiting on this sorrel to finish going to seed so that i can share these seeds because i get asked every day do you have sorrel seeds where do i get sorrel seeds and i really want to be able to share them and so i'm letting this sorrel go to seed for that i've got some cucumbers i just transplanted in here along the bottom of this trellis you can see we got a little baby cuke right there. This will be growing up this trellis soon. More of that beautiful Indian blanket, sorrel. I've got some herbs in here. Our cilantro is going to seed. The dill is going to seed. And fun fact, if you didn't know this, you can eat dill flowers, actually. They taste like a, a much more pungent dill. Like if you like the dill taste of a pickle, this will be like, bam, in your face. But you can actually, the one way I like to do this is I like to cut it and put it in like a salad. It's really, really pretty. Imagine having a salad with this little garnish sitting on top. It's very, very beautiful, super pretty. In this bed, I've got sunflowers, another calendula that needs to be harvested. You can see right here in this little calendula, I've got all these little seeds. So if I just pop this little head right off, I can bring that in or I could sprinkle the seeds in there and let them regrow. So I'm gonna bring this in, deadhead these others, pop these off, which is gonna allow this to put off a lot more blooms. This is the Tong Ho, it's like a chamomile's cousin and I cannot wait to get more of these little flowers. The kale, as you can see, is getting some caterpillar damage. But I wanna to talk to you about the kale. If you did not know this, you can leave your kale stalks in the ground and they will keep growing. This kale right here, you can see, has been in this garden roughly about three years. 
and every year when the caterpillars eat it to a pulp or I come out and I harvest all of it, I can come out here, I can just grab these, pull them right off, bring all of this inside and you can see it was actually starting to put out a new little trunk on there. This will continue to grow. There's one right here, one right there. All of these kale plants, I am going to leave these stalks in the ground. This might be it. I'm, I'm leaving this one to see how long it goes. If it goes like 10 years, we're gonna ride that train as long as I can. But you can see this bushed out at the bottom. Also, it's gonna continue to putting new leaves and sprouts all the way up and down that stalk. So when your kale plant gets decimated by the caterpillars, and it will as it gets warmer, leave the stalk in the ground. If you really want to use it as like a steak, put a pepper here and tie that thing to it and just let it go. But you can leave these in the ground. You don't have to pull them out. Here's your proof. Little one, this one, three years in the garden. I got zinnias popping up everywhere little tea tiny tomato plant that just got transplanted i've got basils everywhere this is the mexican mint tarragon this actually popped up from last year i had one here this is so good it smells so so good if you've never grown this and used it in your cooking it's so like it's almost rosemary-ish like closest thing i can compare it to is rosemary and it flavors things so so well more sorrel for all the kiddos. I'm letting these broccoli plants go to seed. These broccoli plants are going to seed. You can see I've got these little tea tiny pods here that are actually pretty ready. Almost the rain kind of got them a little bit soft. Um, we got our borage putting off and showing out here. If you didn't know it, you can actually also eat borage. Borage flowers kind of tastes like cucumber is what I hear. It's like, it's a very refreshing, not overwhelming thing like cucumber. Um, and I want you to remember this forage plant. Look at the size of this. It's like bigger than the size of my hand. I've got one over there that's wild and out. Um, this one is sustaining quite a bit of caterpillar damage. Oh, there's a culprit right there. Just take these off and get rid of you. This plant is probably going to be my sacrifice plant. Every year I will let one kale plant just get ravaged by the caterpillars because usually when I do that, the other ones, they don't have as much damage. They tend to go most for whatever is sickly or not doing as well first. And I just let it have the one that it goes for. This I believe is a black hoppy dye sunflower. And you can see it's just starting to peak open and I cannot wait to see that. Moving along in the garden, this bed has tons of volunteer sunflowers, lettuce going to seed, cilantro going to seed. You can see right here, this was a squash that just peeped out of its little seed recently. Gotta come in here and weed a little bit of this stuff. I'm not sure what all these are, but if you have something like this that comes up, make sure that you transplant some of these out. These cannot all thrive here together. I could leave this one, take some of these out, and maybe leave one on the other side, but I also have a Roselle. So I am going to take a lot of these out and transplant them to other places in the garden to have that one. If you don't, they're just gonna be crowded. They're gonna fight for nutrition. They're really not going to thrive, so I do not like to do that. I've got an artichoke in this bed, another Roselle cherry tomato that I'm going to let grow up this vine. I'm going to shake those, make sure those grow. And this bed, it's kind of the hodgepodge bed. It's got a lot of stuff going on. It's a little bit wild over there. I'm going to set this kale down and hope that I remember it there. This bed is just flowers. Look at that beautiful white polar bear zinnia. I've got some celosia. These things are just so cool and draw you in to touch them. I've got some arugula that's going to seed. 
I've got black eyed Susans. I actually just transplanted this Gumfrena atomic purple in there and you can see it's got just little tea tiny purple leaves on that. This bed, all for show, all for beauty, flowers, all the fun. In the big beds in the garden, I've got a window box cherry tomato here and I want to show you something I found to be interesting. I have transplanted peppers into this bed. So this pepper is one I started from seed. This pepper is one I started from seed. That pepper is one I started from seed. These peppers popped up from a pepper that was in here last year. You can see in here, I had some sugar rush peach peppers and I just let some of them fall in the ground and these seeds germinated and these plants are so much bigger than those even those these sprouted up not long ago this is coming out of the base of a habanero um plant that i had right here it's either a habanero or a sugar rush peach pepper two years ago it was a habanero last year was a sugar rush peach pepper and i just cut them both at the base and this thing is massive i've got all kind of stuff going on in there and it's way bigger than anything that I transplanted in the garden. It's probably hardier because it was here. All those things, if you can let things go to seed in your garden and come back, they're gonna be so much stronger because they've gone through one season and they're already slightly acclimated to the weather that you have and they're just gonna do better. So I am going to leave this. I actually had a pepper that I had planted here right in the back and you can see this one's struggling. This one is one that I had planted and it's got damage on it and it's struggling and these have peppers on them and they're thriving and they're so much bigger. Let things that have gone to seed in your garden stay if possible, transplant them if you like, um, if you're able to do that, but you'll get hardier and hardier plants every single year. I always encourage people to do that. I actually just planted, look, you can see another, another pepper right there. I just, planted seeds for the infamous Trombancino squash right here today. And let me show you friends, this is the last Trombancino squash from last year. Look at it. It's massive. Like I can't even fit it on the camera. Like it's so big. And even I was worried about this one. This thing is like, I can't even hardly hold it this thing had a little damage spot on it last year something had gotten onto it i saw it immediately took it off it scabbed over just like a butternut squash would and it's been totally fine look at that thing it's massive this i picked out of the garden last may may of 2021 and here we are end of april 2022 and it's still kicking I had one, I'll spare you the picture of it, that I had two left in my pantry. One started going bad and I was like, great, I'm gonna use your seeds for the ones this year instead of planting new ones. And I was really kind of hoping that would happen, that one of them would start going bad and I could use those seeds because as things break down, their seeds start to get more viable. So I planted those seeds right down here at the base of this trellis and I'm hoping that I'll have Tromancina squash growing all up here. And on the other side, the Lakota winter squash. Look at how much this thing has grown in one week since we came last time. Last week when we videoed this thing, it was this tall. And in one week, it's grown another two feet. That's incredible. I've got several more squash on here. And I wanna talk about something with squash. If you didn't know this, Sometimes your squash will put out male and female flowers at the same time. Sometimes you get all male flowers and male flowers are these little flowers with a stem. You got a flower with a stem, that's your male flower. Other times you will get lots of female flowers which look like this. You'll get a ton of them that's a fruit with a flower. Fruit and flower is a female. I've got one right down here. 
I've had many, many times last year, one of my Tromancino squash, I had planted three, put out all female flowers. I had a ton of fruit, like the little fruit with the flower and no male flowers to pollinate it. And almost all of those just died because there was nothing to pollinate them. The next one put off almost all male flowers like a week later. And the other one put off both. This Lakota winter squash has done a great job of putting off both. I don't know. I don't know if that's just this variety or if I'm just having a good year and lucky, but I will take it. I'm excited about it. The peas that I said I was going to tear out because they weren't flowering, literally flowered the day that I was going to take them out. These are also edible. You could eat these and make them a pretty addition to a salad, but they are growing me some tea tiny peas. So I'm going to let these grow for my girl. The other window box cherry tomatoes are all planted right in here. And this is borage. You remember the other borage from right over there? I'll put a little picture of that borage right over here. It's smaller than my hand and this borage is massive. The soil in this bed is different than the soil in that bed. And this is just proof. Soil makes all the difference. I have been amending the soil in that bed for two years and I'm still not as good as where I am in this bed. So I'll continue to shake my flowers and plant all my favorite things in here and stick with herbs and flowers over there because it just, it just does not perform the same. Ooh, look at this pea, this pea. You're almost ready for my girl. Where's my girl when I need her? Um, I've got lots of Mexican torch sunflower coming on in here. Y'all, if you could just feel these leaves, it's so velvety and smooth. I could like rub the leaves of these flowers forever. I've got Rosel planted in the middle. This sorrel, after being here for a year, is finally going to seed. And I actually have my first little flower on this Kiku chrysanthemum melon. I'm really excited about that. I had sown three seeds in here just to make sure I had another one. I'm doing the same as I had done on the other one. I'm planting two plants that I started from seed and some seeds right into the ground so that just in case things are at different times and maybe if I only get males or I only get females or whatever, it'll also stagger my harvest for things. It'll make some last a little bit longer. So I'm excited about that. This one Mexican sunflower that was in here is just, it is reseeded and it is proud of itself. I've got a few more peas over here also that are putting off beautiful pea pods and flowers. So those stay. The flowers in the front are filling in beautifully. My comfrey has been going to seed. Oh, look at those beauties. Comfrey is actually really great for making um, fertilizer. So you can take these leaves, you can soak them in water and make a tea varying times. Like some people say, put it in a five gallon bucket with water for a month. If it's really middle of summer and it's getting really hot, it may not take that long, but you could also chop up these leaves and throw them in your garden for um, like a mulch compost as well. Comfrey is wonderful. These are the beautiful little flowers as it goes to seed. And then we've got some little seed pods back there in the back. I've got some beautiful snapdragons in here also. Some of these are getting spent in the garden. This is a variety of the Indian blanket. I want to say this is called um, Lorenzia, one of the Lorenzia mixes. This is one of my tomatoes I've got planted here that I really need to stake on here. And you can see I've got all these suckers that are coming on. I really need to come through and take off. Ooh, that's a big one. All these suckers, reroute them and let these make some new plants. This just gets away from you so fast. The cilantro on this side of the bed is still holding on. It never got massive, I think, because all these other things are taking all the nutrients, but it's there and I'm still snacking on it. These I'm really excited to see. These are an African, um, I want to say African daisies is what these are. Y'all look at this borage. I mean, that one 
was pretty. Look at this one. This one is incredible. And I'm sitting here wondering why this tomato looks the way it does. And this porridge looks the way that it does. This whole bed was amended the same way, but here we are. Borage is looking fabulous and putting off massive blooms. There is a tomato back here that you can barely see that's actually doing a really good job of being a single stalk. I need to pull that up and stake it. I've got a little sorrel going on here, a couple of small seeds on my marigold. If you didn't know, in a marigold, the, all those little flowers when it goes to seeds, you just pull that out and these are all seeds. And I can just sprinkle all my mulch back, put those in, cover that up. Guarantee you, next garden tour or two, we'll have some in there. The Roselle is doing good in this bed and I've got all the calendula is going to seed. I'm gonna sprinkle that back in. On the other side, I harvested the beets. I'm so excited. I had grown beets for the first year. You can sell this one flower. There was one in here and it's just doing its thing, spreading like crazy. The Coreopsis too. This Coreopsis is just growing in mulch on the ground. And I never water it. It's just here. It's massive, this showy thing, and it's glorious blowing in the wind. This black-eyed Susan is crowding out a comfrey plant that's in there somewhere so I don't know about it but I've got another sunflower there I really like to use sunflowers for shade so this way is south southwest south over here west right over there you can see that setting Sun and I like to plant sunflowers on these edges so as that setting Sun is beating down on my garden it actually provides it some shade if you don't have shade and you need shade plant sunflowers. They will be your best friend. I've got another little borage I just planted over here, some peppers. This lettuce was intended to be harvested, but it unfortunately was not. It is going to seed, so this is going to be bunny feed for a friend. Look at how massive that one lettuce is. So massive. I've got another borage that's just thriving over here. The Roselle is doing good. I planted some tomatoes, some peppers. We've already seen our glorious squash. And this one I'm really excited about. This is a chocolate, uh, Tasmanian chocolate cherry, I believe is what it is. So this is a dwarf tomato that I have never grown. Not dwarf, determinant, I apologize. Not dwarf, determinant. I'm really, really excited about that. I think it's gonna be beautiful and I'm excited to try it. This darling pea has gotta come out because there are going to be cucumbers on this trellis and there's currently no space for cucumbers. So I've got peas on all the other trellises. I don't feel bad about it. I wish this could just do its thing but it's gonna have to go. But that is the garden. The rain has done so many good things for the garden. All the flowers are thriving. Things are growing up the trellises. Soon those sunflowers will be a glorious backdrop from the back. I would love to know what you're growing, what your garden looks like. I'm very behind in getting my garden in, so I'm seeing all these lovely pictures of people with tomatoes already and peppers already. And here I am like, it's okay. It's okay, it'll be good. I'm not too far behind. I'll have gloriously beautiful trellises soon. Make it a great day, friends.